Welcome back to this tutorial. In this video we will build our first TX model. So we will um, build the network, then we will run the model and then we will see how we can extract some information like thermodynamics or geometrical parameters. And then we will see a few functions on how to post-process the results to look at, for example, eigenmodes or um, mode shapes. So very simply, I create a new Simulink um, file that I will simply call, um, let's say, model one. And I open it. So obviously it's empty. And very simply what I do is from the library, I can copy paste elements in my model. So I will use very uh, basic elements for this for this first introduction. So let's say I use a um, closed end. So I copy and paste. Or I can use Control C, Control V. So I will also use an open end and a simple duct. Okay. So let's say we want to look at the at the problem where we have a closed end, then a duct, then an open end. So in my first element, I have my parameters. So this is an upstream boundary location. I can define my area, Mach number, density, speed of sound, and so on. I will leave the parameters with their default values for this example. Then I can connect that to my next element, which is my duct. Um, for my duct, I have other parameters. Um, I can set up a length. So let's say for this example, um, 0.75. Um, I have boxes that I can check or uncheck. Um, in this first example, we will focus on an acoustic problem, but you can also with TX uh, propagate um, equivalence uh, or you can propagate entropy waves and uh, swirl waves. Then you have parameters to define the upstream and downstream position that is uh, convenient for 3D plotting if you're interested in that. And then you have numerical parameters. So this um, box you should not use it very often. If you read the Acta Acoustica paper of Thomas Emmert, you have more details about it. Uh, basically, uh, we use a finite different upwind scheme and you can choose the order of the upwind scheme. Um, by default, we recommend to use three. And 40 here is the number of points you use to to resolve the shortest wave, so the highest frequency. Uh, and um, usually 40 is plenty enough. So those parameters, uh, you most of the time you will not change them, but if you need to, you have the opportunity to do so. And finally, I have my outlet boundary condition. So here I can't connect. I have to open it and say, that it's a downstream uh, boundary condition. And now I should be able to connect my two elements. So that's it, we have our first model. Uh, what we can do is also name the elements. Um, for example, if I want to call the duct my resonator, um, I can call it like that. And this will be my, let's say, um, let's call that my inlet and my outlet, very um, generic names, just for the um, for the sake of, of the example. We will see how the naming can be useful later on. And then I just save my, uh, my model and that's it. The model is ready to um, be run. So then I go with the common line. So what I want in the end is, is a system uh, that is uh, the, the my TX model. So I will call my variable sys as for system. And then I say it's TX 
of then I need to give the name which is here model one dot SLX and then I need to give the maximum frequency until which I'm solving um, so here I'm let's say we want to solve until 500 Hertz um, I encourage you to look in the tutorial uh, folder you will find more um, examples in particular in the BRS folder I will show you how if you want to include entropy and swell wave how you have to adapt this uh, this um, value here but for simplicity let's focus only on acoustics and that's it that's it I can just press enter and I have my model running and after 1.2 seconds I obtain my output so this is of TX type so let's have a look at what's inside my system um, a lot of information is available here I have my model path um, because if you run many computation you can be useful to know where your models are located um, I have my F max which is the maximum frequency until which uh, it's solved so for here in this case F and G my acoustics if you would have entropy you would have a third value here um, property and format for example are just for plotting purposes here I'm plotting in P and U and with absolute value and phase but you could have F and G and real part and imaginary part if you would prefer then I have my blocks I will come back to that later I have my A B C D E matrices which are the matrices of my state space so it's the if it's the matrices those are the matrices of the uh, full appended system um, so all the interconnected um, elements and it's on uh, it's it's of purse uh, st uh, matrices type thanks to the SSS toolbox then I have other parameters like uh, ZISO or ZIMO and so on so to know if the system is single input single output or multiple input single output so then you have the blocks which is the collection of the individual elements you have in your network so in my case uh, case I have closed end open end and duct so you see the order is a bit strange it's not the same as what I had in my model so I had closed end duct and then open end um, we can see that we have the block order property which tells you that how uh, it tells you how the blocks are interconnected so it it is in this case 132 which means that it's one the closed end connected to three the duct connected to two the open end so the the although here in the blocks uh, property it's not ordered um, the way we had it in our network uh, the the entire connection is is still preserved and then i can open each element and have all the properties here so here i have all the parameters that were um, set in the in the model with the graphical uh, user interface so the area mach number density and so on I will find them here then I have my state uh, which is which tells me the properties in my elements so density Mach number speed of sound aria um, Kappa and so on so here in this case it matches with the values that are given here because those were imposed here and, and passed uh, to the system but let's say I'm in the middle of my network so n I did not impose the values uh, at the or I imposed the values at the boundaries but I'm looking somewhere in the middle of, of my network those value will be different so if you're interested on what is my Mach number uh, in the middle of my network you can op uh, open the uh, state property of your block also here you have your a b c d e matrices of your state space for that uh, simple element 
So here we can see also what is important is the name, the one I called my inlet. So this one, uh, we will see how the naming can be can be useful. Let's open another element, for example, the duct. So here I have my length, 0.75, uh, the order of resolution, um, or, uh, the order of the upwind scheme and the resolution for the shortest wave. Um, and we can see, for example, that we do not see the speed of sound or the Mach number in, 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 in here because it was not imposed. It's not part of the parameters we impose in the duct. However, after the computation, we have this, those properties. It's in state. So in the state, I have the, the uh, density at the inlet and the outlet of my duct, the Mach number, the speed of sound, and so on. So here I have two values uh, because my duct is from the inlet to the outlet. Here I have a simple duct with no gradient of temperature, no uh, no change of area um, or cross-sectional area. So the properties are just uh, constant uh, or uniform from the inlet to the outlet. But it, you could have other elements where you would have your properties changing. Um, but here you get the idea. You can extract all the thermodynamics or geometrical parameters of your, of your um, element. So here I accessed it um, graphically, but you can also write some code uh, if you want to automate your post-processing, for example, and you want to extract some information, you can also do that with, with uh, some command lines. So for example, um, you have the function uh, get block. So uh, here with the... Um, get block I need to provide the uh, the name of, of my block so that would be the name I've given here so let's say I'm interested in uh, finding the resonator uh, sorry I forgot to it's I have to provide the system I'm looking uh, into so this dot get block and I have a logical array, so in my blocks, it's the third one. So yeah, that's my duct. So what I could do is, let's say I want to extract the infos of my of my um, duct. I can call that, I don't know, duct info is equal to this dot blocks. And here I want to extract the correct block. So that would be the third one. Uh, let's say I didn't know that. I could call again here the function this.getBlock of my resonator. And what it does, what did I miss? Ah, typo here, this.blocks. And um, it extract. So here I have a new variable which is of duct type. Um, and if I open it, you see I have all the info of my duct. So then I could go duct info dot state, and then I have a, a struct with all the information. So I could um, extract the Mach number only with command line, for example. Okay, so now let's see what we can do in terms of post-processing. So I will open the folder TX where you see uh, all the function that you can call with TX. So we won't go into all the details uh, today, but you can look into it. One very convenient um, function is the plot pole map of this. Um, here I have only one system, but if I had multiple, I could call uh, all, all of them at once and plot all the results sim simultaneously, which is quite convenient. Uh, so here in my, in my case, I have only my system. And what it does, it creates a plot 
of my eigenvalues in my frequency range of interest. So I have a plot in terms of growth rates and frequency, so from 0 hertz to 500, 500 hertz, which was my limit. And in terms of growth rate, so on the left side, uh, it's uh, it means the modes are stable. On the right side, it means they are unstable. So here we have no sources, no losses. So the, the modes are neither uh, stable nor uh, unstable. They are on the, on the stability margin. And in our scenario, we have two modes in the frequency range of in range of interest. Um, that's quite important to know what is your um, frequency, maximum frequency you're solving for, because if you zoom out, uh, for numerical reason, you have more eigenmodes, but those predictions you cannot trust because you're outside of the, of the frequency you're solving for. Um, if you would increase this maximum frequency, those modes would be better results. They should be on this on this marginally stable axis, and obviously this is not the case. So one uh, um, key thing to remember is that you should look only at the modes in your frequency range of interest, and if you um, otherwise, you may be looking at spurious modes. Now what we can do is use this tag uh, or data tips uh, function and then click on the point and what it does it creates a new figure where it um, plots the the mode shape. So here I have absolute value of pressure, phase of the pressure, absolute value and phase of the uh, acoustic velocity. So we can see obviously that the, uh, this is the first mode or the fundamental. We have uh, almost a, a pressure node at the outlet and we have almost a velocity node at the inlet. Okay, it's not perfectly zero because we had some mean flow. It, it was not zero, it was 0.1, I think, Mach number. Um, but yeah, the closed, uh, the open end at the outlet and the closed end at the inlet. Um, makes that we have uh, almost um, a pressure and velocity node at those locations respectively. And you can click on the next point, uh, it will add the new plot, so here we have, um, so the first one was the was the quarter wave mode and then we have the, the first harmonic, uh, or again we have the uh, mode shape for pressure and velocity in terms of absolute uh, value and, and phase. Another function for post-processing that can be convenient is using the uh, make geo of your system. It will, um, oh, sorry, um, not make geo, uh, plot geo of my system. It will create a 3D plot, um, which can be convenient in some cases. So here I have just a simple duct with two boundaries, so it's uh, not so useful in 3D, but if you would be, for example, um, um, if you would be looking at an annular geometry, for example, that could be, that could be convenient to uh, plot it in 3D. You can also use the plot eigenmodes function, um, which is similar to plot pole map, uh, slightly different, which is you first have um, one plot with the, you first have one plot with the, with your eigenmodes. So very similar to, to plot uh, pole map. But you also have um, all the mode shapes that are plotted um, for all the modes in your frequency range of, range of interest. So here I have um, absolute value and phase of velocity 
and absolute value and phase of pressure. And for both of them, I have for the frequency in my frequency range of interest, I have the mode shape of my first mode and my uh, first harmonic. So here I have my x axis, which is my um, my um, along my duct, and I have my frequency axis, and I can see the mode shape for both my modes. So if you have multiple modes and you want to plot all the mode shapes at once, you can also use that function. Okay, um, that's it for this first example. Um, I invite you to look at uh, those uh, functions to see how they can help you. Uh, you also have uh, in the tutorial folder, you will also find um, in this tutorials folder, you will also find some examples and scripts on how to use uh, those functions. In the next video, we will look at uh, typical error messages you will encounter when setting your models. And we will also add a bit of complexity, use more elements and see how you can create more complex networks.